Welcome to Fit and Pain-Free the Bonnie Pruden Way. I'm Enid Whitaker, and I'm joined by Sandy Dirks. Our program each month will center around fitness pioneer Bonnie Pruden and her accomplishments, her method of exercise, and pain, pain erasure the Bonnie Pruden Way, or Bonnie Pruden Myotherapy, which is a way to get rid of muscle-related pain. Join us as we begin each meeting with a few tension relieving exercises. to Fit and Pain-Free the Bonnie Pruden Way. This month, Enid and I are going to be talking about Bonnie Pruden's workshops, and specifically the five-day workshops that she used to do. Enid, what would you like to say about the workshops? I went to my first workshop right after I met Bonnie in 1971. Um, okay. What we talked about the last time in the last blog. And um, again, it, it was a part of a change in my life um, because all the basics were introduced. And that's what the workshops were all about. People came from all over the country and a lot of them were from wise and recreation centers because what they did was they came and they learned routines and they learned the exercises and then they took them back to wherever they taught and taught their classes. So it's, it was a way of spreading um, the method and the, and the music and the rhythm and the fun. Because Bonnie's workshops were, were fun, even though they, somebody said she put the work into the word workshop. <laughs> because we went from nine in the morning until nine at night um, with a variety of different different things. Um, and, and Bonnie was all about everybody exercising together. And people all thought, well, her books were for women. They weren't for women. They were for families. Even though the, um, the How to Keep Slender and Fit After 30 didn't have family in it, it did have executive exercises in it for men and um, exercises you could do after a heart attack in bed. So yes, Bonnie wrote for family. She didn't write just for women. Um, all of her books showed men and women together and boys and girls together and grandfathers, grandmothers and friends and so forth. And the first TV show that she did was with Arlene Francis and Hugh Downs. And what attracted them to her to begin with was fitness fashions because she was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in a full leotard that she had designed. But the show was family fitness. So that's how she started with the family fitness. And um, she, she was responsible for the family Y. She turned the YMCAs into family Ys. And so when people came to her five day to fitness workshop, you could be anybody. You could have purple hair. You could have MS and be in a wheelchair. You could be on crutches with splints. Um, you could be five years old or 85 years old, or you could be three months old on a pack on your mom's back. <laughs> Everybody was invited and it was a family for a week. Um, and it became a family because of not only of Bonnie, but of the staff, because everybody was accepted. And if, if Bonnie heard any rumblings about anything that was not good, you heard about it and set, you were set straight right away. 
<laughs> long before other others were thinking about unconventional families, Bonnie was thinking about unconventional families. And she wrote about it in her family fitness book. So Sandy, would you read that part for us? I will. So this is a book. And actually, Ian, what you were talking about before with Bonnie, you can see from the cover on that, it's not just women. It's two, it's the father, the mother, and I think a young boy and a young girl. So yes. A family fitness program is important because your family is your immediate community. It is the unit to which you belong. The conventional family consists of a mother and father, children, and perhaps grandparents and a few close relatives. But there are unconventional families too. If you are single and share a summer house with others, they may be your temporary family. You and your best friends constitute a family that may be more meaningful to you than the family of your cousins. The people in your club or on your team may be a family. Any intimate group whose members care for one another is a family. And any kind of family can use this book. And we were, we are a, a blue family. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so what, when you when you work with other people as as we did in the workshops with different age ages and abilities it's you learn a lot of different things you learn cooperation you learn teamwork you learn to respect the other person you you form new friendships and you learn manners bonnie was all about manners too <laughs> but also while you're working with somebody like on a one-to-one -one basis with with um, with a tool with a tool or using the body against one another, you learn balance and flexibility, and you learn to sense the other person's weaknesses and strengths. So you know when to push them a little harder or let up so that they are successful too. So the workshop was not just about fitness. <laughs> um, and because music was used throughout, one of our big expenses and time-wise as far as, and money-wise was finding the right music. And we would spend a lot of time going to different record stores and buying records. And we might find one really good one that we could use on, a, on an entire record. And if we found two, we were really lucky. But music was was the heart of the of the workshop and um it it told you what to do it told you whether to skip or hop or be slow or be fast or be high or be low it told you how to feel and told you whether to march or waltz um and that was a big difference from other um classes that were being held because bon Bonnie said life is different moods and so she used the different music to express different moods as well. Um, the workshops were usually held at a college in the summer because nobody was there in the summer at least most people weren't so that made the gyms available to us. And um, everybody, they, everybody that came, like I said, you could, be, you could be five or you could be 85. And you could be from a recreation program or a Y or just somebody that wanted to be, feel better or learn more. Um, and uh, I don't know if you all know Oliver Sacks or not, but he was a musicologist as well as a, a philosopher of sorts, I guess you'd say. And he says that, that music occupies more areas of the brain than language. So music was a very important part of the workshops. And the way it was set up was the first day, you learned all the basics. 
and that included floor exercise, and it included what we call floor progressions, which are what are ways to get from one side of the gym to the other. And um, then during the week, other groups were introduced like babies and toddlers and three to fives and older people. Um, so the whole gamut, when you finished with, with five days, you had a, all the basics because there are only so many muscles in the body. <laughs> and so many ways of moving. So if you learned the basics, you were you saw how the basics could be adapted to any age group and ability. And that was another difference between Bonnie's method of, of doing things and other people. Most other people had a niche that they were focusing on, but Bonnie's was from birth or prenatal actually, up through nursing homes and special needs. Um, one of the other things that happens when you use music is everybody moves together <laughs> um, because most people do have rhythm. We are breathing is rhythm, our heart rate is rhythm, our speech is rhythm. And when you have to hit the beat, most people will all hit the beat at the same time. So that also helps you to become a, a group, a moving group, <laughs> which is a very powerful thing. Um, and, and also when you use music, um, your movement is much clearer and, um, in, and more precise and your form becomes better. So music does a lot of things um, concerning your method of moving and how well you move and how well you improve. Um, one of the things that Bonnie was wonderful at was giving word pictures. And um, if you gave, if she gave a word picture, you remembered it. And so you took it home like a story. <laughs> one of the things that she used to teach us um, was a little story about turtles and uh, and a raft. And basically what it was, was teaching people how to use the muscles that were good, that needed to be developed for, for balance. But so rather than standing on one foot or doing some of the other things that other methods support, her, hers was fun. And, and it got the job done. Um, and so she used to describe this little, you were on a raft and there was mud all around you, but there were turtles in the mud and you didn't want to get them. You didn't want them on the raft. So you had to step with one foot off the raft and get the turtle down on the mud and then get back on the raft and then go the other way, turtle back on the raft. And then she added, now you've got gum on your shoe. <laughs> that meant you had to pick your foot up really high, but you had to step in the turtle, get back on the raft. Step, step in the turtle, get back on the raft. Oh, now there are ants on the raft. Step in the turtle, get back on the raft, step on the ants. So when you finished, you actually had done a cha-cha, <laughs> a cha-cha-cha. <laughs> um, but, but, even though it was a dance, it wasn't a dance. <laughs> but you took it home and you developed those offensive and defensive muscles that are so important for balance. Um, so that was just, she, she had all kinds of different things that, um, when, one of the other things she had was hats. And some about the third day, everybody was told that they needed to bring a hat to begin with. Alice. So the third day, okay, everybody bring a hat when you come back from lunch. Well, people forgot to bring hats. So they created hats out of pillowcases and sheets and different pieces of clothing. But when you put on a hat, you became that person. The person that brought the cowboy hat became a cowboy. <laughs> I, 
I was looking through some old videotapes and the section on hats. And there was one person who had a policeman's hat on <laughs> and she was standing in the middle of the gym directing traffic of all the other hats that went by. <laughs> so um, you, yeah, you become a hat, you become your hat, the person that wears that. And the other thing that she would do is um, say, okay, when you come in tomorrow morning, I want you to all be six years old. Well, you wouldn't believe how they came in. They came in with their shoes on the wrong feet, with big lollipops, with silly hats, or they created very wonderful things. And they were six. And that's when um, they were also introduced to the children's exercise class, but they experienced it themselves as well. <clears throat> so it was a really, really, really fun time, um, full of learning and you just never forgot it. Sometimes there was a theme, um, Bonnie would have a different piece of equipment that she would introduce. One time it was flags, Every, and we had to make them too, of course. <laughs> another time it was an African dance, and another time it was um, a kung fu. Another time it was uh, not jitterbug. What was that other dance that we did to stay in alive? Oh, disco. Disco, right, yeah. And, but what she would do ahead of time, she would hire like a disco dancer to come to her gym in Stockbridge and an African dancer and a Kung Fu person. But then she would take the base, she would break it down to the basic um, movements so that when she introduced it, everybody could do it. Yes, because I remember being in her gym in Stockbridge with the African dancer who had hired to come from New York. He was a great dancer, but he was not an instructor. <laughs> and we were worn out after three days of African dance, which basically only Bonnie and Lori could do. <laughs> but then she broke it down so that it became something everybody could do. She was great at that. And with the disco, um, one of the one of the dance teachers wore uh, a costume of bones, and then um, she painted Lori's muscles in black light. And each Thursday after uh, at evening, there was a show, a black light show usually. And so Nick, Nick and Lori, bones and muscles, did a dance to stay alive. It was just a wonderful, wonderful time, um, again, of learning and friendships and taking home what you learned. And that's why people kept coming back year after year, because it was different every year, but it was the same. It, um, it, I remember other people talking about the workshops um, and when they used to go. Specifically, I remember Faith Trotta, one of our friends, talking about them and how every year she could just anticipate and hardly wait to go to the workshops. And, you know, as a physical educator, she would go and learn and see the new information that Bonnie had and the new music and, and meet with the other people that she met with every year and then come back refreshed and ready to take what she learned onto her classes. So, and, and the other thing that, you know, that Bonnie talked about was, you know, when you're, when you're teaching children, they learn discipline. When you're teaching adults, they learn how to play. <laughs> and in learning how to play, they use their muscles in all different ways. And, when I first found out about the workshops, I'm like, oh my gosh, five days of movement? What the heck? I'm going to be dead by the end of it. But because of the three things that you have talked about before, change, challenge, rhythm, um, if you can talk a little bit about that, um, you aren't, weren't. By the end of the five days, 
usually hump day was a little bit tough. You know, Wednesday was a little bit tough, but, um, but you felt refreshed and your body felt good. And I don't remember anybody walking out of there hurting after five days of exercising <laughs> from 930 in the morning till 530 at night. But you talked about that, that that was part was change, challenge and rhythm. Can you talk a little bit about what that meant? Yeah, well, Bonnie never stayed on one exercise more than like 20 seconds. And then she moved to another exercise to a different part of the body. So the first one the first set of muscles had a chance to recuperate and you could go back to that set of muscles. It might, <coughs> might be the same exercise or it might be a different exercise, but it allowed the body to recuperate so that you could keep going. Um, the challenge came when um, the exercise was changed a little bit. Um, you might add weights or you might weigh it add a different way of doing the same exercise. And then of course the music, the rhythm, that was it. Yes, and people mm -hmm. actually got a chance to practice as well. I remember doing the circuit training where she would have us in groups with different pieces of equipment and the people in the group would have to lead. We weren't always following Bonnie the whole time. Yeah, the, the, the staff really was a wonderful staff. And so, the circuit training um, introduced different pieces of equipment, but it also gave um, the people to experience a different instruct staff instructors. So you might have rug squares, uh, wands, blocks, uh, paddles with streamers. Um, what else was there? Weight bags, hula hoops. So each, eight, you might have eight groups and each group had a different piece of equipment. And then you would exercise with that piece of equipment. And then at the end of that piece of music, then you would move to the right and everybody would have a new instructor and a new piece of equipment. So that would go on for like, what? If, if you had eight pieces of equipment, three times eight, that would be yeah. almost a half an hour of exercise where you change, 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 change. Yes. Yes. And, and after, go ahead. <laughs> Other funny things that Bonnie used to do is um, she had what was called the drunken waiters. Um, <laughs> and she would put all the men in one corner. Usually at a workshop, maybe a quarter of the people there were men. So she would put them all in one corner for the floor progressions for this particular one. And we had Frisbees. And she would say, now, your Frisbee is your tray. And you, there's a bottle of wine and two glasses on that tray. And you have, you're the waiter and you have to get across the restaurant to that other table. She said, but you've already had your wine. <laughs> so these 25 or 35 men would stagger across the room with their, with their trays. No one ever bumped into anybody. And, and it was fun, but what were they doing? They were developing all kinds of, of muscles in their legs that they didn't usually do. It was kind of like cross country running or, um, or even ballroom dancing because they were using the different muscles in different ways, but they actually were using the whole body because they were staggering. Um, so it was just a hilarious, hilarious time not to be ever forgotten. Absolutely. And I also think that the people um, every year, you did some of the things that were similar every year, like the hats and the drunken waiter and the turtles. But every year you guys came up with a new piece of music, with a new routine. And that way people could go home and they would have that routine for themselves or they could teach it in their fitness classes. Right, yeah. And that's, that's where the African dance and the Kung yeah. Fu and Staying Alive came in, the disco came in, yeah. Yes, and again, Bonnie was so good at breaking the movement down so that you could, you know, with the African dance, it was hitch a ride, smell your arm, <laughs> right? Hitch a ride, smell your arm. And yeah. those word pictures kept it in your mind so that you remembered what it was she you were doing in, in the routine. Yeah. 
Um, the other thing I read was, which I, I, she didn't do this, she must have done this in the beginning, was um, Brand New Morning, where like the first morning she came in in, in a night shirt. She, she, was, she was amazing. Yeah. She came in with a striped um, night shirt on, one, one of the ones that was down to her calf. Uh-huh. And the music was Brand New Morning. <laughs> And that was the warm up for that day, brand new morning. Yeah. And another yep. time, I can't remember what what the occasion was, but and I can't remember what the music was. But she had a paper bag beside her. She pulled out a tuxedo and put it on. She pulled out something else and put it on. She pulled out a wig and put it on. And she pulled out a baton. And she was a conductor. Oh my God. Yep. <laughs> yep. So, and how many people were at these workshops? It could be 150 to 200. Yeah. And that's a lot of people. Absolutely. To figure out where I'll go it's and. Out of control. Right. It's out of control. And something else that Bonnie did, which I don't think most, she taught in a circle. So, mm -hmm. so the instructors might, there might be four instructors in, in, on the inside of the circle, but everybody else was on the outside of the circle staggered. So you, you, everybody could see everything that needed to be done. There were no mirrors. You weren't looking in the mirror at yourself. <laughs> right. Yep. And then by the time I came along, um, she was doing along with the five days of fitness there was also a workshop at the same time, a myotherapy workshop. And so that, um, so the fitness people had their curriculum for the five days, <laughs> but within that five days fitness, they were also taught self-help myotherapy. Um, yep. So we used to use the crook. I used to teach and I probably a couple other people did too. People had to work on themselves with the quick fix. And then the, um, the myotherapy participants actually had um, a myotherapist working on them every day. And then they also had the fitness component, which both of them included aqua exercise, time with Bonnie, and actually you coordinated all of that. Yeah, um, that, that was a great, I, you know, I was, in <laughs> I was in charge of seeing that all of this went smoothly. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of preparation to do, but Luckily, I was good at that. <laughs> um, and everybody knew what they were supposed to do when they were supposed to do it, and it happened. And there was never any, there were, the only slip ups that ever occurred were what happened at the college. You know, there wasn't enough food, or, or somebody didn't show up on time. It, it was, it, there was, ne or the towels weren't there. It was never anything that happened within our system. Um, but we always managed somehow and, and people never knew what was going on behind the scenes. Exactly. And, and again, that's due to Bonnie's training of flexibility. If there's an obstacle in front of you, can you go above it, below it, around it? What's the alternative? She was the ultimate professional. The show yes. must go on. Yes, she was. Yes. Yeah. So those days were a lot of fun. They were exhausting and a lot of work, but they were so much fun and so rewarding. Yeah. You know, I really felt like we were helping people and having yeah. fun at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else you want to say about the workshops? Um, no, all, we, there is a lot of, um, a lot of preservation as far as videos and film and so forth which is a subject for another vlog. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, if, uh, as we said, if you ever had a chance to go to one of those workshops, you'll never forget it um, because it was life-changing. It was. Yeah. Yeah. And even I, the one thing, the only the thing that I wanted to bring in is there were people that came every year, um, like the Kellys, whose children basically grew up <laughs> As they were going to the workshops. Yeah. Yeah. And there and, was and you know, this one. Um, he was only five when he first came. Actually, I think he was four and they snuck him in. 
<laughs> but but um, Bill Kelly was an artist also. And so they always presented something unusual at the shows on Thursday nights. And um, but when the little when the little one was tired, he'd just go lie down on the mat and take a nap and then rejoin. <laughs> yeah. So it was it really was family friendly. Yeah. The workshops were. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, until next time. Thank you, Enid. That brought back a lot of good memories. And maybe we can do them again someday. We'll see. Okay. Okay. Until next month. Bye. Thank you. And as Bonnie says, keep fit, be happy.